I'm glad I'm not the only one that's impatient. Holy smokes. We got a lot to spill out today. Somebody took a pot shot at Mr. Ted last night, and we're going to straighten that out right away. There's nobody dumb in this house. So at any rate, uh, let's drop that. We're going to get right into it right now. Goodness, silver's up $4.64 in the beginning of the year, and uh, gold's up $3, $320. The DXY is coming down a little bit, but again, Jim Willie said to wait for that to go up and up and up, and we're going to see the crack up boom happen with that, and then bam, that close the dollar. So at that point in time, that's when we're going to see all the lovely things happen for us that we've been waiting for. So um, I know y'all are like us. Uh, we've been stacking for a long time. We're, we're silver poor. We're eating peanut butter and and uh, baked beans and what do they call it? Uh, penny, penny, uh, penny soup or something like that, where you take the hot dogs and slice them up. But anyway, the uh, the stock market, goodness, what happened to the world today? Golly, the stock market went down 45.66 points. That's a little ridiculous. So look, let's get right into this thing. We're going to talk about the type twos. It's not time to bury this hatchet yet. There's still more to learn, and you're going to find that out today. And anybody that says bury the hatchet, I don't think they're a patriot, folks. And this is a patriot silver show that we're talking about bringing here to Baltimore. We're going to be joining up with an existing show that's been going on for 50 years. 50 years, three times a year. And uh, we're going to be a part of that. So if you want the lower room rates and everything, we'll have the uh, that up and running pretty soon. Uh, so you can get your room rate and your flight recommend flight, uh, flight reservations into Baltimore. It's going to start on June 13th. It'll end on the 16th if we have a full day program. I'm telling you, it's going to be nice. Saturday's going to be our day there. We're going to start out with a nice breakfast. We're going to have open uh, meetings and breakout sessions, talk about estate planning, answer some questions, have a nice lunch. Then we're going to get into uh, some more breakout sessions to more talk about um, how to start enjoying yourself now that things have popped for you since uh, since now we're looking at June. And then we're going to get into uh, the Monster Mash. We're having a band come in and uh, we're all going to party like there's no tomorrow. So it'll be a lot of fun. Cash bar, but everything else outside of that is going to be covered. So you just got to get your hotel room reservations and your flight taken care of and get on down here and have a good time with us. You, you guys from Canada, come on down, have some fun. We're going to learn a little bit. So let's jump right into it, folks. Coin World Magazine put out an article in October 15th of 2021. And 2021 is when the, um, uh, it, when you get that up for him, the, the uh, okay, get up the Coin World. Okay, here we go. The Coin World thing here. Okay, the magazine. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so there's the Coin World magazine, and let's take a look at what this article has to say regarding new American Eagles anti-counterfeiting tech. Let's get that off of there. Let's keep up a little bit. Okay, here we go. Let me get have the full screen. That's okay. I'll do it. Full screen. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay, this is the Coin World article. It came out in October of 2021. All right. I'm going to read excerpts of this fr uh, from this article to you. And let's pretend that you're a president of a corporation that happens to be selling type one, type two eagles and junk. And it suppose you're a coin dealer. OK, you think you read the coin magazine that comes out. You think you should stay on top of that thing. I certainly think you should. OK. And I think that if you've been in this business for a little while, you probably have read the article, which sort of makes your comments a little disingenuous, doesn't. The 2021 American Eagle reverse of 2021 gold and silver coins have both been overt and covert anti-counterfeiting technology, according to the United States Mint. The existence of technology beyond what is visually present on the coin was revealed by a Mint official in response to questions about a new anti-counterfeiting laboratory, laboratory at the Philadelphia Mint. OK, who knew about that? All right. Of course, you have a lab at a Mint, right? Examples of the redesigned 2021 American Eagle Reverse 2021 gold and silver coins and all surface finishes are being produced using anti-counterfeiting technology. Where are all these abundant reports talking about counterfeiting that's going on? I haven't seen any of you. So what is this? Is this some way to track our money? I don't know about you, but I want our money honest and anonymous. Let's repeat that. We want our money honest and anonymous. We don't want our stuff tracked. This is America. There's no spying on Americans. You guys know that. And if any of you are going to try and put up a battle against what they're doing to us with regards to the type two, I'm going to be going over more technology here that you're unaware of. So just because you're unaware of it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It means that somebody's unaware. OK, and I think that there are other descriptions for that type of person. But anyway, I'm not going to go there. All right. I'm not going to start slinging mud with those guys. So um, 
Why are we so concerned about counterfeiting? Have you seen reports a massive amount of counterfeiting? No, uh -uh. I think it might just be enough out there in order to sort of paint the picture that we got to do something proactive in order to keep the things from being counterfeited. You know what, though? In the United States, if you're caught counterfeiting American money, the penalty is death. You're not allowed to steal other people's uh, purchasing power. That table full of currencies over there, that's not allowed to have happen. So um, Mint officials are not identifying the coin's covert feature or features. Mint uh, benchmarked its efforts against anti-counterfeiting programs implemented by other major world mints. We're going to talk about that. Says Todd Martin, Deputy Director of the Mint's Office of uh, Corporate Communications via email October 12th. Now, I'm reading this to you because other people couldn't read it, or if they did read it, they forgot it. So we're going to remember it this time, okay? And those of you that are running companies, let's remember the article here, okay? All right, don't do this to the public. Give them the truth. Let them make their own decisions. If you happen to be out of stock of it, so what, okay? Then let them make a decision, an informed decision. Don't tell them what's right what's wrong, okay? Let them give them the truth, all right? So we're going to get right down into the nuts and bolts of this thing here. Coin World had scheduled an interview with U.S. Mint Director David J. Ryder. This is a character. Watch this. After a September 30th departure from the Bureau, right before they started making the Type 2s, huh? Yeah. To discuss the anti-counterfeiting measures and other initiatives introduced during his tenure and already submitted questions when Ryder reconsidered and respectively declined an in-depth interview. An in-depth interview. You see that? Get a copy of this report. All right. I'll write in a highlighted section there. Coin World also requested an on-the-record interview with acting Mint Director Allison Dune, but Treasury Department chose not to make her available to this publication for an interview. Right where my hands are, okay? So, is it possible that maybe the Mint is putting pressure on the retailers? Say, hey, there's nothing, nothing going on with the Type 2s. Let's continue on. Let's continue on. So, I want you to call, and I'd like you to get a copy of this report. OK, now let's talk about this character, David Ryder. Interesting guy he is. He used to work for the Treasury underneath the Ronald Reagan. Then he left. Where did he go when he left? Oh, guess what? He went to Honeywell. He went and he worked for Honeywell. And then he came to the United States Mint and he became the director of the United States Mint. And it was him that introduced all these different uh, technologies here. His penchant was to make sure that all this money was tracked. We've got to know where it is. So those of you considered concerned about confiscation, it's not going to be a knock on the door thing. It could be by satellites and knowing exactly where your stuff is. And you think that's crazy? And if you have a Harley Davidson out there, we're going to be touching on Harley Davidson here a little bit. You know, you can put the same technology on your Harley Davidson and track it everywhere it goes. So in case it's stolen, you know exactly where it is. Oh, goodness, that can't be true. Hold it now. Where's the power source going to come from? Well, goodness, maybe it's coming from some of the uh, some of the, the 2G, 4G, 5G, 5G, whatever, the power that's in the air. So we're going to get into this a little bit. I got more information to give you. So how does this tracking technology actually work and why is it part of our global su supply chain? This is a white paper put together by Honeywell. Look at this Honeywell right up here. OK, how track and trace innovation is critical for global supply chain ecosystem. Call and get the information, folks. Before you dismiss it as bunk, which is easy to do, but it's dangerous, very dangerous, okay? Get the facts. Here is the white paper. Here is the facts. Now, we talked about Harley-Davidson motorcycles, right? Very interesting. How about this? GPS tracking and micro dots, all right? And if you read through this, if I highlight it, and I'll give you copies of everything. All you got to do is ask, okay? All you got to do is ask. Although a GPS tracking device may help you track and locate your assets, the addition of micro dots will help you identify the asset and prove that it belongs to you and make it a desirable and not make it a desirable choice for thieves. Nano tags micro dots are small between 0, 0 0.1 mill, millimeters and 1 millimeter in diameter. Metal flakes with a unique alphanumeric serial number embedded in them. Isn't this what Bix Weir showed us when he recanted? The number is shown then linked to an individual or business on a database. This can be used to identify the original owner of the marked item. Folks, again, we want our money honest and anonymous. We don't want to be tracked. We don't want to be traced. 
And if you're not, if you're going to put your hand, your head in the sand regarding this type two issue, that's very likely possible. Okay. It may be that it's not all there. Okay. But you're going to, you're going to draw your own conclusion after you get all the facts, but you know what? We're not done with all the facts yet. There's still a lot more to come out. Okay. So one of the things I wanted to share with you is this video right here. Watch this. Okay. I don't know if this is legal, but we're going to give it a whirl here. Let's see how to make it go. And to make it go here. Let's see. Hang on, guys. How to make it play. Okay. In its simplest form, you have to know when you received, what you did with, and when you shipped every single pack of cigarettes that your company handles. Pack from of cigarettes. Research, from our understanding and talking to many companies across the entire tobacco supply chain, it most likely will have a pretty big impact on your business operations and how you need to control the receipt, the handling, and then the shipment or delivery of tobacco products uh, once they are in your possession as a wholesaler, as a distributor. The distribution of tobacco goods need to be able to report to the European Union certain drug and trace events, such as the arrivals of goods, dispatch of goods, packing and packing, and everything related to invoices, payment and purchase orders of all the tobacco products that you are manipulating. You need a mobile app that runs on your selected ergonomic devices, such as the ones from Honeywell, and is able to capture. Mm -hmm. All right, we can get a little bit more of that, but I think you're getting the idea. Apparently, in the European Union, they want to track each individual pack of cigarettes. Isn't that interesting? Somebody told me that, that smokers weren't catching COVID. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, let's stick with the facts here. Here's a report on precious metals and anti-counterfeiting technologies, okay? Another white paper that you should take a look at. And inside this white paper, it talks a lot about different technologies, okay? About a vision fing fingerprint here, okay? We want our money honest and anonymous. Why do we want an ALP vision fingerprint? Let me read it to you. Serial numbers may do well for tracking and traceability, but adding a solution like a solution or a problem. ALP Vision Fingerprint can strengthen the anti-counterfeiting ecosystem. Oh, we got to have that. Absolutely. Cut off my left arm so we can watch out for the ecosystem here. Education and outreach. Mints and precious metal dealers face a dilemma in today's market. They must strike the right balance between informing the public of known counterfeits and maintaining a trustworthy brand. Okay. So how many counterfeiting incidents are there out there? there is it right now anybody hearing hello 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 we went black for some reason um goodness what is happening here so can anyone tell me whether or not uh, they're getting the signal put a new comment down here if you would it's, it's, uh, they're saying freeze it freeze froze, but it froze okay it looks like you're back on okay are we back on folks back on okay good enough all right. So here's a report that came from a paralegal that I've asked to look into this. And uh, she is digging like crazy. And she's going to be coming out with a report on vaults. That is a very, very criminal infested industry that we're going to be talking about. There's <laughs> folks, you got to be careful. You're going to you have to learn to hold your stuff. Honeywell Business is involved in the track and trace technology on a global scale. And David J. Ryder previously worked for Honeywell's Authenticity uh, Technologies, a track and trace technology. Take a look at the attached article from CoinWorld based on a press release by Todd Martin from the U.S. Mint. 
The gold and silver coins have both overt and covert. Covert means hidden. Okay. Anti-counterfeiting technology. I thought it was interesting that Martin described the overt technology, the missing read. But the article states mint officials are not. So I have uh, I've conducted my own research on these and I used an ohm meter to determine what the impedance was, whether or not there was a difference in impedance from one side of a type one to the other side of a type one. And then same, same thing with the type two. And I'm telling you the difference is were um, were different. OK, there was a there was a small difference. What I'd like to do now is I want to show you the equipment that I used in order to. Um, in order to conduct these tests. And here it is here, okay? All right, you can get the same equipment. You can do your own tests. The thing in the middle there, the long thing here, okay? That is a HF, high frequency analysis wave uh, analysis machine, okay? What it does is it measures um, wavelengths coming off of uh, a different thing. You'll find it just screeches when you get it close to your, um, when you get it close to your, uh, what's it gonna call a server, I think it is inside the houses. So at any rate, um, there's a lot going on in here and I don't think this is time to, um, to, to sort of bury the hatchet. What I think we do is I think it needs to be turned over to an independent lab. I think professionals need to take a look at what's going on with the type two and get back to the public because it's our money that funded this stuff. And I don't think you nor I want ourselves being spied on. And for those of you that are trying to hide the facts from the, from the public, shame on you. This is th this forum is for the public. It's not for us to not for you to go out and mislead people and sell stuff that shouldn't be sold. You know, come on, guys, let's clean it up a little bit here. OK, you know what I'm talking about. and You know who I'm talking to. Right. So I'm including various articles, including articles relating to Alp Vision. Alp Vision. This is very interesting. Alp Vision is a company that is in um, in uh, Switzerland. OK. And what they do is they do a similar type of thing with uh with their technology and where is that report out vision here intermax well you know what they say and this where what happened to it anyway it's a company out of sweden has developed the same sort of technology and for those of you that um missed what was going on with the harley davidson's you can have this technology added to your motorcycle at the dealership and it's just simply applied on any surface okay with an adhesive brush and that's it. So where does it get its power source? Where does it get an antenna from? How does it work? Why don't we figure that out? Rather than say, oh, it can't be possible. We're, in the, we're back in the Stone Age. We just figured out how, to, how, to, how the wheel works. No, come on, guys, come on. Let's take this a little bit more seriously. Our freedoms are being taken away from us. So again, Honeywell comes out with another white paper, Radio Frequency Identification, RFID. It doesn't exist. 365 Silver doesn't exist, okay? Who else? Salivate doesn't exist. Oh, it definitely doesn't exist. Come on, Salivate. Get the gosh darn information. I'll send it to you free. I've reached out to you a couple of times. I asked you whether or not we want to do something together. I've asked Andy Sheckman if you wanted to do something together. Heard from his office. Come on, guys. Let's get this information out to the people. There's a lot of information here. So, again, I think the next step is to get these coins, get a, a sample into two or three different independent labs. For those of you that would like to get involved, why don't you get the name of an independent lab and take a type two out there. I don't know what they would charge, but find out what it would charge. And maybe we'll call, we'll take up a little donation so everybody can pitch in and get the information. Isn't that sad, though, that we as American taxpayers have to pay money to find out what our government is doing against us behind our back? I don't know about you, but I don't like that very much. In 1965, they took the silver out of our coins. So they took the metal out of our metal. They got the dirt out from underneath of our, our heads. And they took the um, this, these unique identifiers away from the stock certificates. So you no longer own the stock certificates that you think you had. It's being taken away from you one little bit at a time. And for those of you out there that are supporting this stuff by dismissing this new technology as being completely impossible, you know, either admit that this is beyond your scope of mental capacity or that going to step up and get the facts. You know who I'm talking to. Come on, guys. Let's stop this battling back and forth. Let's work together. We could have a debate. Anybody wants to debate me on this type two thing? Let's debate. I got the information. 
I will debate any. Let's debate also. Find somebody who wants to debate me about Bitcoin. If the lore of Bitcoin is, is a finite number, there's only 21 million, still a lot, but anyway. If there's 21 million Bitcoin worldwide and you buy one, why don't you know which one you own? Does it matter to you? You're just going to walk into a dealership and say, I'll take a car. It doesn't matter which one it is. No, folks, you got to have a unique identifier. You guys are being led down the gauntlet, okay? You're going to have to wake up a little bit. You're going to have to become a little bit more skeptical. But for the time being, I would only trust God in the periodic table. Three nines, four nines, pure, gold, silver. That's where you want to be. 90% junk in the United States of America. That's a good place to be, too. The dimes are flying off the shelves. I'm telling you, folks, go check the inventories. The type ones are just about gone. People understand what's going on. Type twos are out there, and the guys need, still need to sell them. They got to turn over the type twos so they can get some more dimes in and sell you what they really want. Interesting. Cash flow problems. So anyway, would you impugn your integrity because you're stuck on a little cash flow problem? No, why don't you use some of the, some of the um, lines of credit that you have? As far as IRS reporting is concerned, we touched on that the other night with regards to a program. And uh, I reached out to those folks and said, look, why don't we debate this on your platform rather than debate it on mine? Because I only have 3,250 subscribers. You guys have 40 some thousand. Why don't we get the message out to the same audience that you said and you dissed and said the, the facts weren't right? The facts are right. OK. And then we talked about whether or not type ones, type twos, eagles, both silver and gold, as well as junk up to 1,000 faces, not a reportable transaction. And then the fellow goes on and says, well, you know, you should, should report it anyway. Should report it anyway? Golly, folks. I think what we need to do is take a look at what Judge Learned Hand had to say about this. Anybody remember Judge Learned Hand? Anyone may so arrange his affairs that his taxes shall be as low as possible. He is not bound to choose a pattern which will best pay the treasury. He is not even a patriotic duty to increase one's taxes. Do you agree with this? I certainly do. That's why I'm suggesting to some of you, I know I did on a couple of different occasions. I had two CPAs do the taxes. And you know what? They both came back with different numbers one year. So I decided, hey, why don't we take these guys out to dinner and get them to know one another? So Irv and Jim and myself, we went out to dinner and said, guys, what do you think? Well, Irv used to write the programs uh, for the IRS out of Colorado, and Jim was an examiner for the IRS. So between those two guys, uh, it, was, it was a great group to work with. And those were the groups inside the Provenza group that we put together in order to handle the estate tax planning that we did. Very, very sharp guys. May Jim rest in peace, though. Um, Jim's heart crapped out. Uh, at any rate, he was, a, he was a really good guy. So as far as the IRS is concerned, the IRS, what does the IRS spell? Okay, can you tell me what that spells? Let's see. Look at that. It's right in front of your face, folks. Look at this. Theirs, the IRS, theirs. Okay. How many of you are shocked over that? It's all over the place. How many are shocked we have 151 taxes on a loaf of bread? And we're just supposed to pay more in the way of taxes? As far as I'm concerned, the tracking technology, vaccinate us, track us, stun us, subdue us, whatever, stun guns, we're paying for all this stuff, enough is enough. Will you join me in saying no more? Will you stand up to this stuff? And if you hear anyone saying, there's no difference between a type one and type two, why don't you correct them a little bit, okay? Why don't you say, look, I'll get the, I'll get the information for you. Honeywell's involved in this. We all know that he is, it is. And David Ryder was the guy that implemented it. And why did he avoid a, um, an interview right after he retired? How nice of that. Goodness, we paid him to be the director of our Mint. We gave him health insurance. We gave him benefits. We gave him time off. We gave him vacation time. Oh, my gosh, we were very nice to this guy. So we said, hey, during the 10 years we were there, can you tell us about what happened with the type twos at the end? No, I can't really do that. Oh, let's talk to the new person. Maybe they'll tell you. They're actually still in the payroll. No, I can't tell you about that either. Okay, doesn't exist. All right, let's move on. Oh, gosh, folks, come on. So as far as, far as reporting is concerned, it's up to you to arrange your taxes as in the least, uh, uh, in the best way that's, fun, that's, uh, that's advantageous to you. You take your flat tax returns out to five different people, five different CPAs. How many return answers do you think you're going to get? At least five. So what I suggest you do on occasion is have your tax return done by two different CPAs. It might cost you twice as much, but I bet you, you might find something out because if you had to do all your work for a whole year in four months, do you think you might make a mistake? 
I think so. You know, it's only human. Um, so why are we taxpayers funding this technology to track us and vaccinate us? I don't like that stuff. I don't think you should either. So let's get back to what's going on with uh, the price of silver and what's happening with the availability of silver. Enough of this type two stuff. As for me and my family, we will avoid the type twos. We'll, we'll pay a little bit more and we'll, we'll uh, pay for the insurance and make sure that our government isn't tracking us and keeping them aware of what stuff, where stuff is. But anyway, I'm not saying it's actually there. I'm saying it's a possibility. I'm saying that my test ind indicated that there is a strong likelihood of something is going on. And what I'm saying is that this discussion warrants further information. And I think these should be sent to an independent lab, a third party lab, possibly two or three labs and see what kind of results we get back. It's big enough. I would be happy to kick into one of the labs and fund that one myself. If you find the name of the lab, I'll help fund one of the labs and you guys fund the other two. OK, and then we'll get a real report back by some scientists and find out what it takes to activate this thing and produce a signal. Why is all, why did it take 10 years to develop it? And why did it take an extra 90 days in order to strike the thing? So you remove a, a reed around the outside. Yeah, I got that, that one. Huh? <sighs> Come on, guys. This is a bit too much for Ted. All right. So next, we're going to talk about circuit breakers. Isn't this honest? Circuit breakers. What in the world is a circuit breaker? Well, folks, a circuit breaker is sort of a timeout in, um, in the, uh, the metals market. Okay, because so, this is all overseen by what's called the COMEX. So let me read this to you about, okay? Get this white paper too, please. All right, we got all this stuff for you. Bottom line is we want you knowledgeable. We want you to know the stuff true, okay? And we want you to be able to converse with it so you're comfortable speaking with it and everything, okay? I don't want you to, make, you don't have to become an expert in it. Just become fluent in it. You need to learn what the differences are between Austrian monetary economics and Keynesian economics. Keynesian economics is on the way out. Austrian economics is on the way in. So what I'd suggest you do is um, let's get that uh, paper and read a little bit about what the current econ economy is that we have. Read a little bit. It's not that long, folks, and we will send you a copy. Now, some of you say it's a little um, you know, uh, blurry or whatever. This is available on our website. So on one side, we have Austrian monetary economics, what that's all about. It's all about freedom, free markets. See up here? Okay. And it's all about entrepreneurism, encouraging people to bring out the best that they have. Okay. Think of a new solution to an old problem. So at any rate, let me read to you a little bit about this. And tell me whether or not you sound, this sounds like a fair, honest, and open market. At the commencement of each trading day, there shall be an initial price fluctuation limits in effect for each futures contract month of the primary futures contract. Now, keep in mind, folks, as far as a silver contract is concerned, there's 5,000 ounces in a silver contract. So when the price of silver goes up $1, it goes up $5,000 per contract, and it's actually expanded a little bit that because of what they're doing, they're shorting it. So it makes it a very untenable situation, very risky to be in. And that's what uh, we're thinking is going to happen. It's called a, a silver squeeze. And it seems like because we're learning the truth, we're doing the silver squeeze to them because we've gotten rid of all the type ones. Now we're going after all the dimes. Then we'll go after all the quarters. Then we'll decide whether or not we, where we want to go from there. But right now there's still plenty of dimes and quarters left over. And uh, I think there's even some still some uh, type one monster boxes out there. If you're looking for any like that, please reach out to me. Uh, there are a couple of distributors out there that have it. And um, I've been I've been told that uh, since the we're an up and coming uh, growing uh, uh, YouTube channel here that they're going to try and support us. So if you're looking for any type one American Silver Eagle monster boxes or dimes, uh, reach out. Um, I'm not exactly sure where the price is right now, but uh, you'll get a live price. Also, you can lock in before actually getting the price and um, before actually paying that is. And um, it'll give you up to five days to get the money in. So anyway, I think that's very pleasant. These are uh, good people to work with. I've known them for about 11 and a half years. I know the family. They're very good people. So the circuit breaker, though, it stops after three minutes. Okay. And if the price goes up more and it's allowed to cool off and it will do this up to four times. So you're looking at $12 increase on the price of silver before then it's allowed to simply run off. And that's what I got excited about last Friday because I saw that it jumped up to $30.09. And I'm thinking, wow, this might be liftoff here. But these guys, I guess they had just a few more shorts left in their pockets that uh, we need to drain out. So let's go back and let's take a quick look at the uh, U.S. debt clock. And let me explain to you what they're doing. 
because they're issuing what are called naked paper shorts, which is selling something that they don't own. Now, there are people that you know, I was on the phone with one guy who was uh, dealing with a coin dealer in Florida, and he'd already sent his money in for four thousand dollars for dimes. And they said, when they come in, we'll send it. Send your money first. Well, it's been three months and he's a little out. Of, he's a little impatient. He doesn't know what price he's going to get or whatever else. So let's take a look at what they're actually doing with the uh, U.S. debt clock. Let's go over to the right side. You're seeing uh, the second column from the right. Three hundred ninety six point one five right over here. What that means is there's 396.15 American Silver Eagle paper certificates sold for each ounce of, of uh, physical that exists. So currently we're looking at a spot price of what, 2800 what? Where are we looking at a spot price? Uh, 2890 say, okay? I don't even know that's that. High. Can you see what the uh, price is? Okay, I have it on your phone. Anybody know what the price of silver is right now? So we got 396 times 28. What? 2843. 43. Folks, that's $11,258 is how much they've collected. Can you give me part of the screen? There we go. Okay. Um, can you give me part of the screen here? Yes. Okay. Let's, let's move off of that. Okay. So we got, they've collected $11,258 per ounce of, of uh, fake silver. Isn't that something? And how much of that do you own? Do you own SLV? How about GLD? Now, PSLV is a very interesting type of uh, ETF. It's called an electronic tra tra traded fund. What is this all about? That was, okay, that was from, <laughs> we already been past that. We already know it's 11,000 some odd dollars. That's what they've actually collected per ounce of silver. Do you think it's possible it's going to go up there? I do. Sure I do. Because you're talking about something that's extremely finite. Why would they invest all this time and money to track where these, where these are. They know they can't go door to door because only one half of 1% of you even have it. So confiscation on a door to door basis is not going to happen because we're not on a silver or a gold standard right now. That was an argument used to sell people very expensive, obscure coins. Look at this. One guy called me up and he said that he had given over $147,000. He trusted them. He said, we'll get you some coins that won't be able to be confiscated. Well, he's got some pictures of them because he got sent directly to a vault. One of the coins was a five ounce round coin from Lord knows when it was a, a long time ago. And another thing he bought or was sold was a quarter ounce, $3,000 obscure gold piece. Now, why would you want it something that isn't the coin of the realm? And a lot of people, I'm glad you guys are waking up. Coin of the realm has been a term a long time. We brought that out when we first started talking about it. Um, about estate planning and the prevents a, a group and, and Ted speaks here. It's nice to know imitation is uh, quite flattering. So we all know what coin of the realm is. And we know where it came from. Hello. Yep. Okay. So you need to hold the money of your country. How many times are you hearing that? You probably not that many times outside of me, but doesn't it make sense? Now I understand that if you're in, in Canada, there isn't any sales on, uh, uh, tax on the sale of maples, but David Ryder, you got to watch out for him. He spent some time up there with the Royal Canadian Mint. Now, how do we know this? Because the lady that's the paralegal that just got laid off, she's uh, she's very competent. And um, she uh, she's done the research on this, and she's been listening to David Ryder's speeches, talking about how he spent time at the Royal Canadian Mint and talking about how important counterfeiting is and all this jazz and new technology was shared with her friends to the north. Isn't this nice? So, folks, um, you're going to have to be a little bit more careful. When somebody brings something up, investigate it first. Don't say they're stupid. Look at it first. And for those of you that have any, you know, why don't we just go over this real quick, okay? This is what's called a curriculum vitae, all right? This is all the things that I've done, okay? Let's see. Oh, daggone it. Okay? This is who I am, all right? We go around here like this. All the certifications, diplomas, degrees. Honor fraternities, societies, awards, Greek honorable mentions, honorable fraternities, okay? This is who we are, all right? That's who I am. And then we put together, I collected a number of fake, well, not fake, but uh, uh, defunct currency notes. And you're going to see on here that there are 89 of these. And for those of you, and I'm not, a bunch of you have already seen this before, but for those of you that haven't seen it, all it takes is one person to learn, and it's changed their life. So please, please uh, go along with me here. That bill up here, this was a, yes, turn that over. That's called, called a greenback, all right? 
That was the last currency reset that the people in America have ever seen. And the people that are there and people that saw that note, they're no longer with us anymore. So no one on the face of the planet right now, or excuse me, no one in, in the um, st in United States has lived through a currency reset at this point. Now, as I go through here, obviously you can pause it and stop and take a closer look. This is a pretty good camera that's on this. Uh, so I think you'll be able to see what's going on. But this is what you want to avoid. You do not want your money, your, your uh, paper bills left on my table because that'll be number 90. Imagine this. This is what the banks do, folks. They relieve you of your silver because it's too heavy. They give you paper in exchange. But before leaving their office, they sell you stocks and bonds and mutual funds. Maybe you sell you some property or whatever. So you leave with just a pile of paper. And then you go back to get the silver. And, oh, I'm um, sorry. It's no redeem not redeemable. Or uh, the phones are busy. Or, uh, you know what? The, the vault is closed today. Or, no, I'm sorry. You're going to have to go back to the company that sold the stuff to us that came into the vault. Oh, do you see the problems? And these are problems people are having. You know what? The crap hasn't even hit the fan yet. What do you think is going to happen when 100,000 people are calling to get their money because the phone lines are locked up and the banks have crashed? It happens, folks. It's the, it's the nature of the beast. It's what happens when you're dealing with Keynesian economics. Austrian monetary economics has been around since 4,000 BCs. 4,000 BC, before Christ, that stands for. All the way up to 1871, when the leaders decided, oh, let's take the power away from the people with the silver and let's move the power into the gold. And that's what they did. They took the, the purchasing power away from us. And what could we do? It was very well thought out, very subversive plans. They put stuff out. This guy 365 up there in the, in the UK, he never came out and said it was a hoax, did he? did he? Did he ever come out and say it was a hoax? Interesting. Sometimes the best way to fool somebody is put it right up in your face like that. I don't know. I don't know where he's coming from. I don't know why he did it. Um, I, if I was running YouTube, he'd be off there in a heartbeat. And if, if he was if he was a securities licensed certified financial planner, he'd be arrested. He'd be put in jail and he had a ten thousand dollar fine. You're not allowed to do that kind of stuff. Joking or no joking. When it comes to people's money that they've worked all their life for, because it's mainly affecting people that are retired, senior citizens that are saved all their life for their retirement. And you guys are going to bilk them out of it because you need to move product off the shelf that you don't have in stock. That's not right, folks. I got a problem with that. Got a real problem with that. And we're going to set the record straight because you know what? I'm not giving up and I'm not going anywhere. Now, you can turn my computer off. You did twice here. I don't know why that happened or how that happened, but it did happen right as we were talking about these things with the type twos. Interesting. Take a look, folks. I'm not going anywhere. And you know what? I've just about accomplished everything I want to accomplish. There's some fun things I want to do, and hopefully God will see that. But um, what what's more most important to me is getting the truth out to you because you only got one shot at this. You got to come out of the other side of this with real assets. And if you do, you will have created multi-generational multi wealth. I don't know how much more to implore this to you. We're here. We're giving you information. We're making it enjoyable, you know, getting a couple of laughs along the way. Uh, we're, we're telling you where you can get what. It's in stock. Um, as far as the prices are concerned, you're going to have to suck that up because you waited too long. But at least you can get it still. There's going to come a time when you can, can't get it. So a number of you are asking, well, geez, how many ounces of silver do I really need to have? And a lot of you have already ordered the chart. OK, you don't really need to have that many ounces of silver. All you really need to do is embrace it as it should be embraced as real money. And what you're holding is simply as a proxy for money. So at any rate, if you'd like to reach out directly to us, I'm Ted at TedSpeaks.net. There's the website. And if you wouldn't mind, give us some, in, in, uh, some feedback on the website because we made some changes to it. And we're hoping that uh, it sort of fits with you. And then uh, we do have a merchandise coming in. We got the hats and we got the mugs. And soon we'll have shirts, very nice, high quality shirts. So uh, a couple of people have donated money in order to keep the price of these things down. And for those of you on occasion, you've received the free gift or whatever. Um, if you can pay it forward, pay it forward. If you want to just take it as a gift, it's our pleasure to give you a gift. All right. So we're talking about the mugs are what, uh, $6.99 and the hats are going to be $18.99. And as far as the, uh, the $275, that's going to include a hat. It's going to include a one ounce coin. It's going to include admissions to uh, to all the different uh, venues that we have set up. It's going to include all your meals on Saturday, all your meals on Saturday.
So you just got to worry about the things that you're milling around. Uh, but uh, the U.S. Mint is going to be there. The Royal Canadian Mint is going to be there. It's an old show. It's been around for a long time. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're all going to be walking around in white hats. We're going to find each other real easy. And it's going to say I-Y-K-Y-K -Y -K on it. If you know, you know. Uh, but most people don't know. So on the back of the hat, it's going to say if you know, you know. It's a great way. It's a great way to break the ice and make some new friends. Folks, so us silver stackers, I mean, we give up an awful lot to be stacking this stuff, don't we? Because that's money we could be spending. We're actually fiat currency we could be spending now to have a more enjoyable and fun life. So at any rate, what I'd like to do now is um, let's sort of wrap up here. If there's any questions that you all have, I think maybe Margaret Ann could put one or two of them up there for you. But um, let's put an end to this type two thing. The next thing that should happen is three private labs should get three samples each of type one and type two for comparison purposes. And they should energize these things with whatever it takes to, to get the signal off this stuff. If it works on a Harley Davidson motorcycle, I'm sure it'll work on a, an American Silver Eagle. These Eagles are going to be worth low, more, way more than any Harley Davidson bike. Trust me. So please hit the like, share, and subscribe. How many people got watching right now? 277. And how many likes do we have? 130, 147. Oh, come on, guys. You can do better than that. Just hit the thumbs up button for us. Let us know you appreciate what we're doing. Hit the like, share, and subscribe button. It helps us to get the message out. So um, uh, this other channel, uh, goodness, it has almost 10 times the number of people we have. But uh, what's interesting, you guys are really pulling, pulling, the, pulling the weight here because you guys are commenting more. You're interacting more than most any other channel that's out there. And I really appreciate that. Uh, after the reset, how long is the transition period? It's going to be about 10 days. And during that 10-day period of time, everything that's been done to us is going to be explained. There are three eight-hour programs going to be running back-to-back 24-7 to educate everyone as to what's been going on. We're all going to be told the truth. So why am I out here now telling you the truth? Because there's information that I'm giving you that's actionable now. It's not going to be actionable later. You got to get rid of the fiat. You got to train in the fiat for the real money of your country, whether it's maples in Canada, whether it's uh, 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 American Eagles here in the United States, along with junk silver, maybe it's a kookaburra in Australia. Um, uh, we have a number of other countries with their currencies. And if any of you are interested in any foreign currency, we have we have people watching us from Japan. Folks, I, I did read what you sent me from Japan, and I'm very proud of what you're doing. You're starting an own little enclave over there of English-speaking Japanese people, and you're trying to make a good go for yourself. I have asked Golden Eagle to look into providing you guys sovereign coins in your country. So if you're in Japan or any other country like that, reach out to me if you're interested in getting the money of your country. I believe that I can help you. Uh, we'll get it sent directly to you. If you're in Australia, we'll have it sent to you directly from the Perth Mint. If you're in uh, Canada, more than likely it'll be sent to you directly from the Royal Canadian Mint. But you'll be getting some, some good prices. But what I'd like you to, to find out is whether or not um, – uh, the prices are comparable, whether or not you're happy with the service and that type of thing. Who's buying back during the reset? Who do you think is going to be buying back? Think about this for a minute. If we're going to be having an, an asset backed currency, okay, who's the currency going to be issued by? U.S. Treasury, right? Okay, the Bureau of Printing and Engraving. Well, if it's going to be back, don't they have to get the banks hydrated with the, with the, uh, the silver so that people can bring in their paper and actually get a silver coin back? Doesn't that have to be actually be in there? Absolutely. So the way this is going to go is the Treasury is going to reach out to each one of their authorized distributors, which are, I believe, seven or ten or whatever. And they're going to reach out to the wholesalers and retailers, and they're going to put out a clarion call looking for eagles to back the new currency. And I've already seen the new currency notes. So can you think of another way this might work? Can you think of a way that we're all going to come out of all this debt? And who is the debt paid to? And why is it owed if it's not constitutional? So if it's not constitutional, is it possible this debt will be repudiated because of the doctrine of law called the fruit of the poison tree? This is a real stupid comment. Yeah, I know I'm dumb. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that really torqued me off, guys. But let's be respectful and polite. OK, if you don't know something, just ask. I'll help you. All right. Can you talk about the inverse? Oh, yes. Can I talk about Exter's Pyramid? Absolutely. Exter's Pyramid, if we can get that up on the uh, screen here. OK, all right. We're, okay. okay. Exer's pyramid has silver at the very tip, then gold, then all the other proxies for the money. Real, and I said money. Okay, above it. Okay, I'm going to show it to you in just a minute. Until, uh, Margaret gets it up. It's called the Exer's pyramid, but we want to get the one that's up that has the silver and the gold at the very tip of it. 
okay? So all these other proxies for, for the dollar, okay, for real money, okay, are going to melt down to their intrinsic value, which is nothing. But that purchasing power doesn't go away. So let's assume that we have this big ball and the Fed just keeps making the ball bigger and bigger and bigger like this, okay? All right? Once you put the all air in, it's not going to come out. So once it's in there, what's going to happen is it's the purchasing power is going to shift from all the other areas inside the ball, inside this bubble, to the two small little bubbles in there, the silver and the gold. And that's what we're pointing out here right now. So you'll see the silver at the very tip, and then you see the gold, okay? So you're going to see that silver is actually less plentiful than gold, according to uh, Bix Weir. Now, he's done a lot of analysis on this, and he's really tied in. I admire Bix for what he does. I think there's a lot of pressure on him, and he's performing anyway. It's all what do you have? Two or pod, two or three podcasts out a day. The guy's hitting it hard, and he cares about us. Uh, Margaret Ann joined up for his Road to Ruta Club, and just very very nice. Got a letter and an envelope, and it was it was really thankful for for uh, for what we did. We wanted to tie into him because I really appreciate Bix's work, and uh, no one has been a more of a of a of a of a fighter for for economic freedom than i think bix he writes songs about it he sings he travels the country he does um what coffee houses and bars and stuff and you know the, the guy is just an unstoppable force hats off to you mr bix i respect you so anyway what we're talking about here is all these other proxies for the dollar are going to go away think of it all melting down and the only thing solid here is going to be the silver and the gold but what is happening, folks, is the purchasing power contained in these, like the base money, the bank money, uh, the government money, all the way up the line, okay? All that is going to melt down into the, uh, the purchasing power of the silver and the gold. That's what's going to happen. Can you talk about the inverse pyramid? Well, we just did that. It's called Exter's Pyramid. Exter's Pyramid, okay, is, is more in tune with Austrian monetary economics. What I suggest you do, if you have a kid in school, why don't you reach out to the to the math department, the economics department, and see whether or not they're offering Austrian monetary economics? Because apparently I'm getting phone calls from parents and they're telling me that all they're offering in schools is Keynesian economics. Folks, that's not where the action is. They want you tied up mentally into the game. OK, you got to get out. and You got to have the real money. The real money of our country is or the United States is American Eagles, both gold and silver and junk silver, which is pre-65 dimes, quarters and a half dollars and dollars. So what happened in 1965? They stole our money from our money. When did they steal the land out from underneath our head? When did they steal the stocks and bonds and, and, and mutual funds from us without giving us an incidence of ownership? Too many things like this, folks. The cost of living is rising. And now the, the priority is in the wrong place. My gosh, we're taking care of illegal immigrants coming across the border. We have we have homeless veterans who fought for this country living on the street. Have you seen some of the pictures up there in uh, in San Francisco? Anyway, folks, now is never hold the script of a warring government. OK, well, I guess we'll hear that one coming out pretty soon. Coin of the realm, all this other kind of jazz. But anyway, these are economic terms and it's more terms that you're going to hear from the Austrian School of Monetary Economics. So, folks, I hope you got a lot out of this. How many are you up to right now and how many likes we got? We have 296, seven folks uh, watching and 202 likes. Whoa, 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 folks. Thank you very much. And how are we doing with subscribers so far? Uh, 3,320. OK, if you haven't subscribed, folks, we really need to get the number up because it puts us in a different realm at that place. Um, and uh, it would help us out a whole lot. So I'm trying to battle uh, guys with much larger YouTube channels. But, you know, what we're battling with quality. We got you. You're a digital warrior and you're on our team. And you know what? We love you and we're going to be here for you and we're going to see you all the way through this. Again, this silver thing is just a step along the way. This is not an end all be all. My objective was to coming in here was to get your estate grown up as large as possible. And then when the estate planning came around, you need to, to make sure it goes where you want, when you want, handled by the people you want. And more than likely, you guys want 100 percent of your assets to stay in your family. Well, if you use a will based estate plan, it isn't going to happen because it has to go through probate. Probate is the process where you reach up out of the grave and sign documents because you didn't do it while you were alive. And that process is overseen by the courts called a probate process. And in the state of Maryland, probate is based on probate commissions. Commissions are based upon the gross value of the state, which in the state of Maryland, are 9% of the first $20,000, which is 1800. And then 3.6% of the gross value thereafter. Folks, 
I know you're in a lot of other states around there, but you all have probate commissions that are statutory. Find out what they are. I suggest you do that. And if you can't find out what they are, take a walk on down to the local courthouse and ask to see the last 10 wills that have been probated because it's public information. You can see what Charlie had next door when he died, how much he had, where it was, what his wife got. You know, it, these things I think should be kept private. When you have a revocable living trust, it's all kept private. It's in a document that you control. It's not overseen by the courts or the banks or anything else. It's a personal document that allows you to take personal control of your assets. Again, I'm going to go over a couple of terms that we've used in the past. The interorum clause basically means that no one can choo choose to challenge the terms of your trust. Otherwise, they're automatically disinherited unless you are found to be mentally incapacitated at the time you set up the trust. But that being the case, your attorneys are going, going to the pokey. You're not allowed to do business with people that are in, in mentally incapacitated. Keep that in mind, guys. For those of you who are out there selling dory bars to senior citizens, 80 years old, taking all the money they have, packing 50 of them away in a, in a, in a vault, charging for a thousand ounces when none of them weigh a thousand ounces. Folks, I'm out here to fight for you. You're going to have to help me fight for you too. Do whatever you can. Some of you are telling me that you're stopping some of the nasty things being said. You're, you're, you're helping promote uh, truth. I appreciate that. That's what it's all about. And somebody's watching. You know who's watching. I'm not. Somebody more omniscient than me is watching what you're doing. So thanks so much for joining us. I really do appreciate your support. You guys are great. I'm getting conversations that I used to have when I had the estate planning practice for 27 years. I, I didn't know the things would pick up that quickly. But what it tells me, though, is you all are really thirsty for information. And you want the truth. And you're going to get it here. Ted speaks truth. That's what happens. Okay? And it's about time. And I come from an environment where if you didn't tell the truth, you were out. I don't know what's going on. This guy that did this YouTube thing over there in, in uh, the UK, 365 Silver, man. If I did that as a certified financial planner with all the all the designations and all the licenses that I had, I certainely wouldn't be sitting here to talk to you right now. There would be X's all over my body. So at any rate, folks, pay attention to who you're dealing with, who you're paying, who you're getting investment advice from. Don't don't watch the don't listen to the the, the fox watching hen house. OK, take a look at somebody outside saying, hey, look, this doesn't look right. This is what you should be looking for. Oh, come on into the store. This is what we've got a special one today. Oh, you don't want that constitutional stuff. You know, you can get much cheaper here at the rounds and bars and stuff. Folks, this is your life. This is this is not to be messed around with. You can play around after the game is over, but your parents never had this opportunity. Your grandparents never had this opportunity. Your children and your grandchildren will never have this opportunity. It's not very often you see a global currency reset. In the United States, no one has seen alive has seen it in a reset here. We talked about that with the greenback over there that Margaret Ann turned over, remember? So anyway, I'm glad that this thing can be recorded, and I'm glad you can adjust the speed. There is a settings button. It looks like a gear, so you can slow it down to 0.75. Now, I'm sorry I might talk a little fast. I'm usually taking stuff into like 1.5, 1.75. I can't take it in at 1.0 anymore. Yeah, it's just too <laughs> – I got to get the popcorn out. <laughs> Anyway, folks, thanks so much for joining us. I hope you got your money's worth here today. Hit the like, share, and subscribe button. And uh, we got a heck of a show coming at you no later than Friday. So what does that mean? Something might happen before. If it does, Ted's going to be here to tell you about it. So be careful who you trust. and Be careful who you follow. If you're on the station right now, you're only going to get the honest truth. Get the information. Get all the facts pertaining to this type two thing. So if you ever questioned about it, you got it. It, it, it will just send it to you electronically. You don't have to wait for it in the mail or whatever. So, boy, I'm old, old school. 65, cheesy peasy. How many of you remember the old, the Commodore 64? Anybody remember that? I do. Well, that had something in it called a Z80A chip chip in it. Z80A chip in it. And that was old-fashioned technology. They're not putting chips in, 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 uh, in eagles. Come on, get real. That isn't happening. Technology is way beyond that right now. Okay. My brother was inside the CIA and he was telling me they could read your iris through sunglasses. Probably shouldn't be telling you that, but it just came out, didn't it? <laughs> Hang in there. We're gonna want a lot more. <laughs> Let's see if the big if the big cane comes out and pulls Ted off to the side. Oh <laughs> well, he was fun while he lasted. Okay, guys, we're gonna have a lot more fun. Hang in there. See you next week.